Well, good afternoon, guys. Good to see you out there in video land. So we've been, uh, we had the boys out here this morning from in town. They were helping just go over some of the headers, just do a basic check. Uh, we've still got some jobs to do on that, bearings and different things. Uh, I thought I'd show you my job for the moment. Is I've got these worn out sprockets here with the bosses, so they go on like that. And then I just put them in the lathe and then part the, the weld off. So then I've got my boss, got my new sprockets, put that one in the lathe. So I'll uh, just got to machine that out so I can fit me boss on and welder on and away we go. So that's for the blue auger. So I might, I'll set you over here. I'm just drilling a hole. So it's nothing too exciting, but anyway. And then, oh yeah, I'll show you the other thing. Matt went on holidays. As usual, look at this. He's left us. And we're right out the front of the shed, and look at that. That's just the sort of caper you've got to put up with these days. So I'll have to... Uh, Jack her up and put her on. I suppose he's keeping me in the job really, isn't he, eh? He's really helping me. Right, we've got the Jenny going now. One done, that goes in there just nicely. The well back, we'll be laughing. And I'll do the other one, so I'll catch you later. Well, good day, I'm back, guys. It's the next day, and in the afternoon, I uh, we just had a meeting about some cotton stuff this morning just to see our options, and um, so we're back into it now. I've just been putting the um, sprocket on so oh, the sun is horrendous there so i've got the sprocket i welded the boss on put it back in put the chain on we run a um for whatever it's worth we've been running this lamba chain so it's a uh, lube free chain 
Uh, apparently they use it a lot in the cotton gins and that, so you get pretty good life and you don't have to worry about lubing it. So we've been sort of running that sort of chain where we don't, you know, you don't lube stuff regularly or you, it's a bit hard to. Uh, we've been trying with it on the combines or the headers a bit too, playing around with it. So we're getting a pretty good run out of it. We, it does wear out, of course, like any chain, but pretty handy if you don't um, have to put oil on there and then there's dust attracted to the oil and that. So just by keeping it dry, uh, seems to go not too bad. So anyway, that's what we've been playing around with. So I'll uh, just put the cover on that. I've got to uh, get the hydraulic filter off it. It's making some noises, so I think the suction filter might be blocked. And yeah. We're getting ready for harvest, so no pressure. Hi folks, Phil here. It's the 11th of September and we're just doing a bit of a crop inspection, see how the canola's going and the organic wheat. So it's warming up. Uh, today's the top of 26 or 7 degrees and we're looking at um, probably 32, 33 towards the end of the week so it is going to get warmer the downside of warmer weather means these jolly flies are a real pain they test your patience so yeah this is the wire 94 pioneer variety and i'm just going to try and walk in here oh it's a bit tangled well just before i do i'm going to knock this grub off so we've done a um, aerial spray by the plane with um, insecticide for the aphids about two weeks ago and we look looks like we may have to come back in to do a, a grub spray or heliothus um, they sort of like the warmer weather so if you can see that grub it's a naughty naughty grub they like sucking into the pods so the canola and eating out the seed so we don't want too many of them but yeah it's quite growing quite well really considering they've only had 60 mil of rain of in, in crop since april so we've been growing this off our subsoil moisture so we've got um Thankfully, we can store our moisture through the summer and grow a bit through the, and, and hopefully, if the roots are established, then we can access that moisture for in drier winter times. Here's some aphids here. If you see, there's some aphids that haven't been killed or flew in. The problem with drier years is when you do have a crop, all the insects want to come and gather in your crop more than maybe in the wetter years. So we are uh, still got to spend the money, even though, you know, the year's sort of going to be probably below average with our yields. But the commodity prices have um, sort of been holding up quite well, so... It'll be, won't be a disaster anyway. So yes, we'll try and get back to our buggy. So yes, the canola has finished flowering as you can see. It probably dropped all its flowers last week uh, with the warmer weather. There's probably enough pods there to may have a reasonable yield. It's just a matter of them filling. I'll peel it back. And there, there we are. Um, that's got the seeds in there, so they'll darken and go black when they're ripe. And um, yeah, they've, that's filled very well, that pod. And then you've got um, later ones that have just sort of finished flowering, like this. They're a skinny one. And if I peel that back, just don't mind me can't do two things at once it's what my wife says anyway I'm not a very good multitasker um, 
Plus these jolly flies. Who else struggles with flies in summer? Yeah, so these are um, just small little pot, um, seeds that are filling. Some have been aborted. Um, and that might be from the heat or, yeah, probably the dry weather, actually. Um, so, yeah, the crop does know it's uh, a bit dry and it's getting on with business and trying to fill what's there. So that's not a bad thing. You can't, can't complain about that. We're just grateful to be able to have a have a crop. We might go and have a look at the organic wheat. We just reached the organic wheat here. It's a little bit of a different story. So yes, that is struggling um, more than the canola. Definitely, it was planted late, as I think we said in one of the videos um, for a bit of weed control. But yeah, we just haven't had. Any in crop rate? Oh, we had uh, about eight mil on it in crop. So yeah, we planted it into good moisture, but it just hasn't really had any rain to get the secondaries up and going properly. Not high hopes for yield wise with this crop. Yeah, this is the later latest of the organic wheat. Uh, it's a little bit behind the other. As you can see, it's probably half a foot high. And it's, we'll just pull up a plant here. So yeah, we've got, like, oh, we've got a couple of secondaries there. Secondary roots. That's these ones here. That's, this that, that root there is the primary root. That's the one the seed come out of. When we plant it, it comes up on that one and then it, um, once you get a bit of rain it grows secondary roots at the base of the plant and they sort of take up a lot of the nutrients and moisture and that um, the primary one sort of will just keep it alive but it won't won't thrive really needs those secondaries to get it up and going so we've got a little bit of moisture here um, there's quite a bit down further three uh, probably four inches down and um but yeah it's just that top top bit there is very dry so it's just not able to tap into the moisture like the canola did being planted earlier and being able to get established with its roots um and access those uh important nutrients and moisture Anyway, the good thing with an organic crop, we all often joke about it. You don't, you don't call it a failed crop. You call it a green manure crop. So, it might be a good green manure crop. But yeah, anyway, we'll we'll see how it how it whether it hangs in there or not, or whether yeah we get a bit of rain because that'll make all the difference right now. Folks, we're back here at the main farm. I thought I'd just give you a quick look at our um earlier wheat so yes this is our hellfire planted uh in early may we've planted it quite early for the variety it's a quite a quick growing variety but being up here on the hill it uh, seems to escape the frost so that's always a bonus and um yeah it's feeling quite nice considering we've haven't had much in crop rain. Goes to show what happens when you can plant early and avoid the frost and have subsoil moisture to get the crop growing. So that's why we um, summer control on our weeds is very, very important because we need all the stored moisture we can get through our predominantly summer rainfall um, here in northern New South Wales and we've got the soil to be able to um, hold that moisture so we've got here a head looks like it's filling three wide we've got three wide some are four 
So yeah, no, it's all looking fairly healthy. Still a bit of green there, so that's good. Um, yeah, so I don't think we'll do a lot with this until till harvest, hopefully. Um, they'll be probably, yeah, I reckon maybe, might be um, six weeks away, something like that. But anyway, it'll come in a bit quicker if it's hot and dry, which they're forecasting. So just to give you a comparison, that's a hellfire head. Now, this is a lancer head. So the hellfire looks a lot more impressive because it's uh, spread out a lot more, the grain. A lot, lot bigger gaps between each row of grain, whereas the lancer, it's very compact. So I think the lancer one, which is shorter, actually has, um, I think it's got 60 grains and the other one's got 50, 52 or something like that. So anyway, we'll uh, see what harvest brings in, uh, yeah, four to six weeks time. We're uh, just doing a bit of quad spraying, killing a few weeds around the fence lines. And uh, yeah, I just saw a bit of, shade thought i'd pull up and uh what better time than to have a bit of a map moment bit of a crop update for you and uh yeah so we'll just go for a bit of a walk yeah as we come in on the edge of the crop you can see the crop not doing very well near the tree line it's uh all the moisture being sucked out by the trees yeah we start going in here a bit and it's looking quite handy the barley so We've got a few little patches there, as you can see. It was planted about the 10th of May, uh, about four inches deep. We had to deep sow to try and get the moisture because it wasn't on the surface. And uh, yeah, not all of it made it through, but in these dry years, it's um, probably not a bad thing anyway, because it can compensate and uh, utilize that moisture for the plants that are there and feel quite nicely. So if we just have a bit of a look at the heads here, we look at a earlier head there that's quite chunky. It's filled nicely. I think we got about 15 or 16 grains high on each side. So that's quite a handy, handy looking uh, head of barley. And um, yeah, so there's not a lot to do with that other than to ripen. The plant's pretty well done the hard work there. So we'll just uh, have a look here at some of this later um, barley. And yeah, it's sort of just sort of half filled. So it's still got a fair way to go to, um, yeah, fill, but it will uh, should do that. So no, it's all looking good. But the good thing in the dry years is the in-crop sprays are not so savage because uh, obviously you need rain for weeds to germinate, but it's, uh, we, we have done one application in crop. This is, um, a clear field variety barley. So we've done one application of that and some fungicide, but, um, really other than that, nothing done in crop. The only thing to sort of watch out for now is the insects and the grubs. Um, yeah, sometimes the army worms love getting in here towards the end of the uh, growing period and chopping their heads off so that's not what we want so but our agronomist is all over that and we'll uh yeah just keep monitoring that and um yeah other than that it's uh all full steam ahead oh i better stop having a map moment here and i'll get back spraying well guys i'm back and we've got some spraying to do. So we're here at the south lease block with the linseed and just checking it out a little bit before we get into spraying. And none of us have really been here, uh, apart from the agronomist, for a little while. So it is really interesting to see, um, yeah, see the progress here. It's looking really good. It's probably out of the two lease blocks, 
that have the linseed, um, yeah, this one's definitely doing a lot better. So um, you can see we've still got some remnants of flowers. There's some, there's even some purple, purple ones there. Um, but yeah, most of the flowering's kind of finished, and we've got these pods here now. So Let's see if I can. So if we split that open, if it'll focus. So inside that pod is just all the linseed. See, there's a linseed. It's just filling. So obviously that'll turn brown. But um, yes, why I'm here is we've got the grasshopper going, and we've got to do a grub spray. So I'll see if I can find. Probably won't be able to. Find, oh, look at that. There's one there. Hang on. There's one there. Right on the tip of my thumb. Don't know if that's focusing, but little looks like a piece of there he is. He's moving. So yes, that is uh Heliophis and we've got to control that because they burrow in much like um Phil mentioned previously. They burrow in, he was talking about the canola, but they'll burrow into these pods on the linseed and just suck everything out. So you end up with an empty empty pod. And that uh, that doesn't work very well when you put the header through. So anyway, it is looking really good here. Um, I probably won't vlog the spray today. I've done a fair few of the spray vloggings recently. So yeah, we'll probably leave the video there for now, guys. So if you enjoy it, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you in the next one.